Hi, I'm Roy Rogers, and uh, it's nice to be uh, invited here by Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Um, talk about my setup on stage, uh, and uh, just what it takes to, as far as uh, my performance. Uh, and the first thing that um, I want to talk about is my guitar. Uh, there's always two things that are the most important for anybody playing, and that's the acts you play, for sure and your fingers. Uh, those are the two things. So anything else as far as setup, as far as I'm concerned, is just en enhances what the, inst what the nature of the instrument is and your fingers. I mean, the touch is the key, of course. Uh, being a slide man, um, you know, I'm using a foreign object also, but that's, that's part of the, the whole touch. So um, with that said, um, my main guitar on stage is a, a 016 New Yorker Martin. I played uh, this style of guitar for many years. It's a parlor style guitar. Um, I like the small body. There's a number of reasons for that for me. It's got a fairly wide neck, almost like a classical neck, uh, which I find is uh, very conducive to uh, the type of uh, style of slide that I play. It's 12 fret at the body, so it's um, uh, it's just a comfortable guitar. I, I love the feel of this guitar, and when you you know, when you're comfortable with your guitar, then you you feel like playing something. So, um, as far as setup, uh, let's see. I've, this is uh, let's see. I want to say that this is about 1970. Uh, you know, they made parlor guitars way back when, from the 19th century. You know, well into the 20s. And this is a. Uh, they I think Martin made them for about a decade. You'd have to double check exactly uh, when the reissues were, but it's between 60s. Uh, I think they stopped in the early 70s, maybe. Uh, a lot of people confuse this for a, sl a classical guitar because it's got a slotted headstock. It is a folk guitar. It, is, it was made for that uh, reason. Uh, generally, they don't have pick guards. So this was put on. Uh, I don't think Martin ever made them with pick guards. Hasn't quite done me much good. As you can tell, I kind of beat up my guitars a little bit, but uh, uh, that's another story. Um, the pickup very important to me. This is a, a DeArmond pickup. I believe it's a Model 260. Um, it's a humbucker pickup for an acoustic guitar. Um, it's, it's really important to my sound because I'm, I'm using an acoustic sound, but I'm amplifying it in a way that's, that's got some power to it, uh, which I'll describe in a minute as far as the amplifications um, that I use. But um, most importantly, also with the pickup, is I use silk and steel strings. Uh, I use the Daddario brand, which I like a lot. Um, it gives it a real mellow tone. I've always liked the tone of silk and steel strings. Um, uh, you know, they don't last as long as, as a phosphor bronze, but you know, it's it's all about the feel, and for me, that's uh, that's the key. Uh, so, you know, the, the guitar without any amplification whatsoever, it just sounds great. <laughs> And it's just got a great, great tone without the amplification. So that's that's the start. That's the key. Um, and it's always been a, a in recording. It's always been a combination plate of electric and acoustic for me. Um, I'll use a number of different guitars on, on uh, the show when I perform it, but this is the main axe. This is the axe that, uh, that really um, improvisationally and just songwriting that I use the most, for sure, always has been. So let me talk a little bit about, about 
the comfort and the, the body style. I think I was attracted to this guitar. Um, I never liked the Dreadnought style. It was too big for me, just physically. I never felt comfortable. This just fits right. It's always good to have a, a, a an instrument that, that you just feel is a fit for your body. And, um, you know, I'm not I'm not a big guy. So, you know, I, li I like the feel of smaller bodied guitars. Um, with that said, being a small bodied guitar like this, it's just got a, a nice tone. It's got a great tone to it. And that attract when I picked it up, you know, I played a lot of a lot of guitars. I think the, the first guitar, if I remember right, that I ever played was actually a classical guitar playing blues and I put silk and steel strings on the classical guitar when I was a kid because I didn't have this you know until I was playing for a while and I, so I was playing uh, electric guitar and I and I tried that and, and I don't even remember what the must have been some generic brand of guitar but I put silk and steel strings on that guitar then I I played this guitar I was looking for like a much better uh, neck and so forth and uh, uh, it's the, the the 12 fret appealed to me uh, you know it, it's just so convenient to be able to just play slide and be right there at the octave for you know it's just convenient it's just uh, I mean I, I have guitars that have you know the 14th fret and they, they hit the body but it's it's a uh, again if you're if you're gonna do uh, playing an E or if you're down tuned to D um, it's 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 just a, a friendly a user friendly way and and the the neck really appealed to me also because as I said I at the beginning I pl I played silk and steel on a classical guitar and uh, this has got a, a a fairly wide neck for for that like uh, the same as a classical guitar so that appealed to me also um, and uh, at the very beginning I used uh, I believe they're uh, a lot of the blues guys, you know, the the, the rounded oval pick, uh, the arm and pickup. I think it's a two ten. I think it's a two ten. You know, white, uh -huh. and they're al nickel, al nickel, uh, non adjustable, not a humbucker. So they were, they had a little bit of a buzz to them. So you had to ground them and that kind of thing. So I graduated to the humbucker kind of thing, and that was it. That was that, and I've had it ever since. Um, but I think guitar wise, it's just, it's just. It's just comfort, it's the comfort zone, you know? Um, you know, even if I'm finger picking, you know, this is just gotta. the ring of it and when you amplify that then you've really you know it only enhances what's already there you know I've described the guitar here I go through usually one pedal I have an AB box just to change guitars on stage and so forth click it off but I, I love this Arion stereo chorus why because I when when I'm usually playing you got to understand I play with what you might call a power trio. So I'm not looking for a pristine acoustic sound. I'm looking to enhance that acoustic guitar sound with an amplification that's fairly kick-ass. You know, it's got to have some, some meat to it, right? So um, we play, we could play at a, a fairly hefty volume as well as not, you know, I could do it both ways. So uh, with that said, I'll go through the stereo chorus and I have a stereo out so when I'm playing live uh, I've got one feed going to my boogie and one feed going to the motion sound Leslie and so that's a big sound and when front of house he'll split it so it's stereo so with the you know and I play with the bass and drums and that's that's a very big sound um, I just like uh, like what that does to this guitar especially. Um, uh, over the years I've gotten a lot of comments uh, from guitar players about the sound of this guitar through this setup saying you know that's not supposed to sound like that and it, it because it, I guess it's it's a little it's a, it's a little bit different than than most people would would envision playing a guitar like this. Okay. 
Uh, this is um, this is simply with the the boogie and the the the, the motion sound Leslie. <laughs> when I first started playing with a uh, a Leslie, it was a real Leslie, but they're way too heavy for me now to uh, to to bring along for gigs. So I'm happy to to uh, to say that this motion sound really gives me a. The, the breadth of that sound as part of my sound. <laughs> gives me a little bit of a gain boost, which is why I like this pedal. Yeah, just, just a little bit, and I like to, to play to where it's, not in this situation, but if I'm on stage, it's right on the edge. And with an uh, important point with this acoustic guitar, if I had a larger bodied acoustic guitar, couldn't happen. It would feed back. I would lose it. But you notice, I'm at a pretty good loudness right here it's controlled so if i if i if i'm in a live concert situation and I, we're playing at a pretty good clip i can keep it right on the edge and it can so i can control that if i want to have it to feed back just a little bit so again it's, it's using what tone this guitar has in a way that's that's elect, ampli amplified and, and working with it in a in a, in a way that uh, i can have a sound scape that's that's not possible otherwise let me play a couple of licks here. Um, uh. guitar that I play uh, a lot and uh, I'm, I'm just uh, this this guitar has a very special uh, special role in, in, in the playing um, what can I say I was uh, first exposed to this guitar many many years ago a friend of uh, Norton Buffalo and mine came to a show and owned a guitar like this, it, this style, and, and not this exact guitar, but he uh, he said, you know, you can play, you're, you're a slide player here. You can just have this on permanent loan. And I'd never seen this guitar before, ever. And it's a, do, it's a Dobro 12 string. Um, this, uh, I, you know, I don't, I know that Dobro was sold, there's a, a kind of inside uh, guitar people would know, it was sold to Mose right in the city, in the 60s, and and I don't know exactly that story, but all I know is I love playing this guitar. <laughs> it's one of those guitars that just has very special uh, tonality to it, uh, especially overtones. Um, so it's a lot of fun to play. Um, you don't see many of these guys. Um, it's, uh, it's just got a unique, again, acoustically. <laughs> I don't need to say anything. I could just do that all day. I could just do that all day. And that's just that's just gorgeous. No amplification.
mean, it's just it, it's such a palette, such a palette to me that uh, now I, I could play the I should play the same licks for you, um, and amplify them, if I may, and and you can see uh, like on a on a live setup what that would sound like. I'll I'll play a similar kind of licks, but all I, suffice to say, it, you know, having a dobro that's amplified. With I think this is a Diarmond pickup. I may be mistaken, but I th um, it looks like a Diarmond to me. It's a cheap pickup, but why this setup works, I have no idea. But it does. It's it's just one of those situations that that came together, and it's it's. I don't mind. It, it's obviously a twelve string. It's a Dobro. Uh, it's unique, but it's 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 a it's part of my arsenal, and I my feeling towards guitars in general is that. I'm never looking for just a guitar that's all in one. Never will be. I don't think there's such a thing. Um, I don't go for, uh, you know, uh, I, I know we're getting very sophisticated with uh, uh, sampled sounds and they're really good, but you know, there's nothing like being able to have a, a guitar that has a sound in and of itself and that's all it does. And that's, that's okay. It doesn't do anything else. And uh, it's great to make music like that. I think the same way. You know, that leads me to a. They always, if if you've read the Willie Dixon's book, I Am the Blues. He, somebody asked Willie Dixon one time. They said, "Well, you know, uh, you produced all these great records, you know, chess records, Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry." Yeah, I see. Willie answered, "I would like to keep a little mistake in my record, my records." Interviewers beside himself. He says, "What? I always like to keep a little mistake on the recording by somebody. Really? Yeah. That way people know the music's played by humans." <laughs> down like and put it in could have put it back in the alley in New Orleans. <laughs> for me just describing uh, two of the guitars that uh, I use in performance. Um, again, Roy Rogers here. I appreciate uh, being invited to come in and talk a little bit uh, by Acoustic Guitar Magazine. Uh, they do a great job in, in getting the word out and just uh, in this day when the music business has changed so dramatically, uh, it's all going to come down to, I think, uh, what you've got to say and, um, and how you say it. And uh, 
The guitars are part of that. We'd be lost without our guitars. So uh, my pleasure to be here, and uh, we'll see you at a show sometime. Take it easy. Thank you. 